Welcome back everybody to another video on the channel which actually relates to a topic that I have been meaning to do a fully deep dive analysis on like this for quite some time and considering what we're going to be talking about today I think this is the perfect opportunity for me to do so. And if you are aware of my own personal taste as a gamer, or if you have seen some of my previous videos, you may have been expecting this for quite some time now. And of course, we are mainly going to be talking about my personal game of the year of 2020, none other than Persona 5 Royal. Now, if you aren't aware as to what exactly the Persona game series is, and specifically what Persona 5 Royal is, I did actually do a video a few months ago fully breaking down exactly why you should go out of your way to both buy and play to fully support the developers of Atlas, both Persona 5 Royal and Persona 5 Strikers, which is technically a sequel to the base Persona 5 game. But for this video, we are mainly going to be fully breaking down something which I am personally very proud of pertaining to the Royal version of Persona 5. Not the base game, but specifically what happens during the finale, or if you are aware of what the game actually is, the third semester of Persona 5 Royal's story arc. And just to warn you all ahead of time, this video is in fact going to be 110% spoiler heavy, so if any of you out there actually have not been able to play this utter masterpiece of a game, I would actually highly recommend that you go out and do so, even though it is an extremely lengthy game, it is totally worth it in the long run, and after you end up playing the game for yourselves, then feel free to come back to this video and hear my thoughts about what the finale fully entails. Now, for those of you who follow me on Twitter or may watch some of my previous live streams on the channel, you would know that I have actually fully discussed about my personal educational life outside of doing YouTube, where currently I am attending San Francisco City College in attempt to receive a certificate to hopefully better my chances of possibly working one day within the gaming industry. So basically, one of my main courses that I took during my spring semester at CCSF was titled The Rhetoric of Popular Culture. And throughout the entirety of the class, we did have a lot of interesting philosophical and ideological conversations about different topics within modern media. And for the class's final assignment of the entire semester, we were actually tasked to make a five-page essay pertaining to any specific item within modern media that could either be a movie, TV show, or what I personally chose, a video game, and analyze it from an ideological perspective that you wouldn't usually see amongst the general community. So, as an example, one of the first assignments that we did have in the class was to watch the movie American Beauty and break it down from an ideological perspective, which did analyze the true nature of the film and what its message was trying to convey for the audience at hand. Were there any real deeper messages inputted within that film and its story, or was it just a creepy movie about Kevin Spacey trying to get on with a high school student. So that's pretty much the class that I had in a nutshell, and based off of the assignment that we were given to end off the class with, it did give me the perfect opportunity to finally go in depth in an extreme level about my overall thoughts, feelings, and genuine passion for everything that the final act of Persona 5 Royal truly holds. And as a bonus, I am pleased to say that I fully passed my assignment with Flying Colors back when I originally submitted it in May, so I did feel like after everything that I went through while writing it and just fully expressing my interest for the game in a way that I have never done before, I did want to make this a very personal video and just share my experience with this amazing game with all of you who may be interested. So if at any point you do find this topic discussion interesting and just share your love of Persona 5 like I do, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to show your support and I would thoroughly appreciate any form that you could show for it and it would also tell me in the future if you possibly want to see more videos like this from me down the line, as I would be more than happy to do so. And again, just to reiterate, I am going to be reading this as pretty much a word-for-word -word recreation of the essay that I did write for my assignment, but I am going to be bringing up some elements of the story just to give you an overall perspective of where the narrative currently is to put you in the setting at hand and give you an entire overlook of what exactly the characters are dealing with in the moment at that point in time. But with all that said, I now present to you my essay on the finale of Persona 5 Royal. Please enjoy.
even though I am a gamer at heart, there are very few video games out there that have managed to leave a genuinely meaningful impression on me as a person, but there are even fewer that have left a direct impact on my soul. And in the case of Persona 5 Royal, my personal 2020 game of the year and JRPG masterpiece, I mean that in the best possible way. Granted, one of the reasons as to why that is the outcome at hand is likely due to the fact that the game's overall length lasts for about over 120 hours. No, I'm not joking. So, you essentially have loads more time to spend with the characters and evolving storyline more so than one would in comparison from simply watching a movie or a television show. But furthermore, it's primarily because of how the game's core narrative tackles extremely prevalent ideological subject matter pertaining to the game's colorful cast of characters, alongside of how it makes the player question whether or not they're actually making the right choice. The broader Persona series as it currently stands deals with a plethora of this subject matter as it is, but Royal goes a step beyond the rest. The base Persona 5 game already delivered an insanely captivating story that was an absolute treat to experience in the video game medium, but Royal enhances that experience 10 times over thanks to its satisfying gameplay mechanics, additional story content, and mainly, new characters. To briefly explain the game's main plot in the simplest of terms, Persona 5 Royal takes place in modern-day Tokyo, and follows a high school student known as Akira Kurosu, or Ren Amamiya depending on the name you choose, codenamed Joker, who transfers to a new school, Shujin Academy, after being falsely accused of assault in his hometown and put on probation. Over the course of an entire school year, Joker and other students that he befriends along the way awaken to a special power, becoming a group of secret vigilantes known as the Phantom Thieves of Hearts. Now, out of all the messages that were spoken throughout this incredible journey, my personal favorite was the newfound emphasis on mental health and the freedom of suffering, brought to life with a character known as Dr. Takuto Maruki, who is the school's new guidance counselor. Years prior to the events of the game's main story and critical finale, the parents of Maruki's girlfriend, Rumi, were murdered during a home invasion, and Rumi herself was injured in the process, leading to her falling into a catatonic depression. Maruki tried to comfort her only to unwittingly invoke her trigger phase by mentioning her family and driving her into a mental breakdown. Overwhelmed with extreme grief, he unconsciously contacted a mysterious entity who eventually became his main persona of Azathoth and made a deal with it so as to allow him to harness its ability to manipulate cognition, which he then dubbed the power of actualization. The first time we see Maruki apply this in the game, he inadvertently purged Rumi of her traumatic memories, but as a consequence, he also wiped away her own memories shared with Maruki himself. As to not remind Rumi of any of the grief that she experienced, Maruki decided to cut ties with her completely. While he was already studying the cognitive realm by then, this further motivated his research so he could help humanity as a whole, or at least, that's how he perceives it. You see, at surface level, Dr. Maruki is honestly a dorky but kind-hearted man who listens to the Phantom Thieves' personal struggles with kindness and sympathy. He also assured them that their emotions were completely valid, help them find the strength to work through their traumas, and encourage them to pursue their dreams. At the end of the day, he truly cares for every single character and only wants what's best for them. So much so that he's risking to do whatever it takes to make their happiness come true, even if it ends up being against their own volition. Unknowingly, Joker has been helping Maruki harness even more power by assisting him with his cognitive research, thanks to all the after-school counseling that he has been taking part of, which then allows Maruki's actualization power to grow even and stronger. Ultimately, by the third semester of the game's story, he acquires the power to completely alter reality however he sees fit, and makes it so that all the Phantom Thieves, as well as everyone else in Tokyo and eventually the rest of the world, never suffered any pain throughout their entire lives, and provided them with their own individual ideal happy world. While this may sound great on paper, it actually ends up taking away the experiences, whether that be good or bad, that turn them into the people that they are by the end of the game. And you, as the player can either decide to remain in Maruki's blissful reality, or fight against him to take back the world you originally fought for. To explore these ideological principles even further, before he arrived at Shujin Academy and met the Phantom Thieves, Maruki had a counseling appointment with a girl named Sumira Yoshizawa, who sadly lost her twin sister Kasumi in a fatal car accident. Suffering from an immense amount of survivor's guilt, unable to cope with the loss, and feeling completely responsible, Sumire then wished to live as her now-dead sister Kasumi. 
essentially embodying everything that she once was. Unaware of his power, Sumire unintentionally triggered Maruki into subconsciously using his cognitive warping abilities and made her think that she was actually Kasumi. It's like she became a completely different person. Some would say that Maruki violated Sumire by forcing his own perception of aiding one in pain onto her without actual consent from Sumire herself. And the crazy thing is, once she discovers Maruki's true nature, Sumire adamantly wants to go back to living as Kasumi, claiming that she doesn't deserve to keep living as her old self. Eventually, Joker and the rest of the Phantom Thieves help her fight through the pain and assist her in learning to love herself for who she is, without needing to meet up to other idealistic expectations. This truly shows what the potential power of instantaneously alleviating someone of any grief anxiety, trauma, or any other negative emotion could accomplish in modern society, and how dangerous it could be if it was overused in such an immense manner. The greatest thing about Maruki's character is that he's genuinely not a bad person, but rather, he's someone who is trying to do what he believes is right for the sake of others by any means necessary. Specifically, when Joker meets his friends in Maruki's altered reality, none of them initially remember how they met Joker in the first place, as their fulfilled desires mean that they have no pain or trauma to bond over. Maruki's powers give him the ability to fully rewrite history up to and including the point of a person's death, effectively reviving them. As such, all of your main teammates from the Phantom Thieves that you struggled with throughout the majority of the game were now living totally happy lives in Maruki's world. In the most intensive cases, Futaba originally suffered from PTSD due to her mother's death and became a shut-in hermit locking herself away completely from the rest of the world. Instead, Futaba's mom is alive thanks to Maruki, as well as Haru and Makoto's fathers. None of the students at Shujin Academy were sexually assaulted by the school's gym teacher Kamoshida, especially An and her best friend Shiho, Yusuke's art teacher Madarame is actually a kind-hearted person and not abusing him in any way, Ryuji's leg is not broken anymore which then allows him to fully run in the track team, and Morgana, a talking cat, is now human. Since none of these tragedies happen in this new reality, Joker's ties with his friends became superficial bonds, and their personas are all temporarily removed from existence due to their awakening being tied directly to their trauma. While Maruki has elements of melancholy such as losing his girlfriend Rumi to a catatonic depression, his newfound powers elude him to creating a world of ignorant happiness that stagnates all of humanity's potential for development. Sadly, this is because Maruki is a man full of sorrow, trying to prevent what happened to Rumi happening to anyone else but going about it in a forceful manner that robs one of their own free will. Over time, all of Joker's friends come to their senses and realize that this dream world is nothing more than a fabrication, and after they solidify their bonds once more, the Phantom Thieves as a team reject Maruki's reality and fight him head on to return to the world they once knew. After giving the team several chances to think their decision over, Maruki decides to accept their challenge. However, the difference between Maruki and all the other enemies that our heroes have faced throughout the game thus far is that Maruki doesn't have a single ounce of ill will or corrupt intentions toward the Phantom Thieves or anyone else for that matter. He legitimately believes that what he's doing in manipulating reality is right, and that everyone will be better off for it. Following a massive battle with the team, Maruki confronts Joker alone, and they engage in a final fist fight so as to help Maruki come to terms with the end of his salvation plan. Accepting his loss, which ends Maruki faltering and collapsing onto the cracking bridge they were fighting on. Before he can fall, Joker reaches out and grabs his hand. As Maruki dangles above his death, he realizes that he doesn't have any strength left and confesses that he was always afraid he and Joker would have opposing views, wishing that instead that they could fight for the same ideal reality together. After the emotional exchange, everything goes back to normal, and Maruki is shown to have become a taxi driver and drives Joker to the train station on his last day in Tokyo as he returns to his hometown. Maruki declares that he has decided to face his life head-on like Joker and the rest of the Phantom Thieves, offering a final gesture of friendship before bidding him farewell. Deep down in reality, Maruki is torn, and a man in agony who is unable to process his own grief, but still desires to stop others from experiencing similar pain. This leads to him assessing that all grief must eventually be removed, ignorant to the fact that his actions prevent people from moving forward in their own way. Despite his intentions not being fueled by malice as he genuinely wants to make people happy, Maruki's salvation plan also used to be validating his cognitive research and saving lives with it by preventing depression and other mental illnesses, 
before realizing, thanks to his conversations with Joker, that these ideas could be applied on a much larger scale. Would you remain stationary in a comfortable life that's free from pain without any means of growing as a person, or push onward to overcome any hardships you may face and fight for the life that you want the most? While he acknowledges that hardships are a natural part of life and that some people do come out stronger from them, it is only after his defeat that he realizes that he needs to do the same. It's in the final one-on-one -on -one duel with Joker that Maruki's inner frustrations come out and showcases all the pain he endured. This physical clash of ideologies finally gave him a real opportunity to vent out his grief with someone who could truly understand him. It is in that moment that Maruki finds solace and can finally move forward with his life, finally becoming free of any and all suffering. In my personal opinion, Dr. Maruki is one of the greatest fictional characters ever made manifest within a video game, showing that no matter how far you've fallen, anyone can be worthy of redemption. There's always room for change, and that goes a very long way. At large, the main premise of Persona 5 Royal is about discovering who you really are. This so-called mask created by society becomes your label, in reality, and is stuck to you as if it is an actual part of you directly. This is essentially the public's perception of you. The mask becomes physical in the metaverse because it is a cognitive world compared to that of reality. Ideas and ambitions become actual physical objects within the metaverse, usually distorted to some degree originating from the hearts of corrupt individuals. A mask is then materialized when the wearer realizes that their entire self-identity is nothing more than a mere facade, an illusion of their true self. That mask is then ripped off and births a persona. Later on, their masks and phantom thief garb become literal disguises in order to remain anonymous when helping people from the shadows. Although trauma can be incredibly brutal and taxing on an individual's mental and physical health, it has the potential to motivate people to find the strength they didn't have before. All the characters within the game turn their labels into power. The persona itself is the materialization of said power, both spiritually and literally, that turns tragedy into triumph. During combat sequences, everyone covers their face when their personas are exposed due to how their persona is their real self, and the real them was technically hiding behind the mask all along. In conclusion, never feel afraid to embrace who you really are under the surface and fight for what you believe in. These heroes sure don't.